Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to create this falling leaves loop animation and I really hope you will enjoy this one and if you do please don't forget to leave the like and if you're new around here hit that subscribe. Now let's jump right into empty blender file and first of all let's just delete everything here. So drag the selection, press X and choose delete. And first thing we'll need to do is to create a leaf. Um, I'm gonna create very stylized one so let's press shift A and let's add a plane. Now let's zoom in a little bit, tap into the edit mode and let's press S then X to scale this down on X axis. And now let's press Ctrl R and increase number of cuts with the mouse wheel to two and create those cuts and right click to release in place. And now we're gonna shape the leaf. So let's press seven on an numpad for a top view. Let's select the bottom vertices. So hold shift, select the other one and let's press S and scale them down like this. Now let's select these two, scale them down a little bit. And now finally these two and press S to scale to create a shape like this. Now let's select these four and we're gonna bring them up a little bit. So press G then Z and bring them up like this. And now let's press Ctrl R again and create a loop in the middle like this and right click to release. And now we can slide some of these vertices around. So let's select this one, hold shift, select the other one on the other side and press G twice to slide them up a little bit like this. And we can do the same thing for the vertices in the back. Press A to select all and Alt E and extrude along normals like this. And let's look from the side by pressing three on an numpad and let's press R to rotate this a little bit like that. And now press two for edge select or select it right here. Select this edge and press Ctrl B to bevel and increase number of cuts with the mouse wheel like that. And now let's go back to the vertex select by pressing one or click here, select this vertex and press G twice to slide it back and here as well. And now select these two and press G then Z and bring them down. And additionally, we can select these on the outside and press G then Z and bring them up a little bit. Now let's tap out and press Ctrl 2 to add subdivision surface modifier or you can go to the modifiers panel and click add modifier and go generate and subdivision surface. But if you press Ctrl 1 or Ctrl 2, you will see the modifier is added with the levels of viewport depending on the number you pressed. So now we can just right click shade smooth and we have our basic leaf. If you feel like this is too fast for you or you don't understand some core concepts, make sure to check out my courses. I carefully designed them to take you from beginner skills to low poly illustration all the way to full character illustration, textured environments and much more. And I build the courses as creative projects, each with its own style. And every time there's a new technique or something needs explaining, we stop for a while and you get an in-depth explanation. But in the end, you still get a full project result. So if you're interested, please check out the link in the description. And now additionally, we can play with this shape a little bit. Let's tap in and I will go for face select by pressing three, select these two faces by holding shift and press E to extrude and S to scale this down. I want to create a stem there and now press E again to extrude a little bit more. Press S then Z to scale it on a Z axis. Now extrude once again. Let's look from the side, press S then Y and zero to make this flat. Let's confirm and let's bring this up and press S then Z and scale it on Z axis. And we can add one more loop here to have something like this here. And additionally, we can enable X-ray view, select all of the geometry right here, press S, then X and scale it on X axis. Now let's disable the X-ray view and let's call this leaf. And now I'll create a camera view. So let's press Shift A and let's add a camera. Now press Alt R to reset its rotation and press R, then X and 90 to rotate this 90 degrees and press G then Y and move it back. And we'll create a background as well. So let's push it A, add a plane and we can scale it up. Press R then X and 90 again, confirm and press G then Y and move it back. And now we'll generate these falling leaves using the particle emission. So we need some object that will emit these particles. So let's press shift A, let's add a plane, tap into the edit mode and just scale it on X axis. So S then X and scale it up, tab out and press G then Z and move it up. So now let's hit zero on an numpad 
to see from camera and we can select the camera by clicking this edge right there and press G then Z twice to move it back and forth. So let's give this some more space and now let's select the leaf and press G then Z and move it all the way down. We don't need to see it here and let's select our emitter object which is up here. Now let's go ahead and add particles. So let's go to particle settings and let's add particle system. And now if you play back the animation, you will see particles are falling down. So we need these, you know, dots to be our leaves. So let's scroll down, go to render. And instead of halo, we'll choose object. And from the object list, we'll pick the leaf object. Now you can see we have all these small leaves falling down. And now we can play with the scale right here. So we want something like this here. And we of course need some scale randomness, so they're not all the same. So let's go all the way up to something like 0.8. You can go in further, but then some of these will be really small. So something like this should be, should be okay. And additionally, let's go check the rotation and randomize the rotation and randomize face. So now if you play it back, you'll see they're rotated in a bunch of different ways. And while we are at a rotation, let's expand the angular velocity and let's give this some continual rotation of five. Now, if you play it back, nothing will happen because you need to enable dynamic behavior here. And now if you play it back, you can see they are falling and rotating, which is exactly what we want. So now let's modify the speed because they're a little bit too fast. And there are two ways you can do that. We can either scroll down and in the field weights, make gravity a little bit weaker. So something like 0 0.5. Or we can disable gravity altogether and just play with the velocity. So right up here in the velocity, you can see it's one meter per second based on the normal direction of the emitter. So if you play back now, they're raising up. So you can do something like minus five and they will fall down at a constant speed, which looks nice for a pattern like this. Uh, but I think this is a little bit too fast. So let's do something like minus three that's more like it but they're now disappearing because their lifetime is too short so let's scroll up and here in the lifetime let's make it something like 150 and let's make our animation length 240 and frame start and frame end 240 as well so now if you play it back you can see they're disappearing much lower which gives us this nice pattern now um, let's modify the number to something like 500 because this is a little bit too dense. Okay, looks nice. And the next thing I want to do is to loop this. And it's very easy to do with particles uh, because you can just duplicate the particle system and shift it in time. So let's do just that. Let's create a new particle system. And from the particle settings here, let's choose the original one, but don't forget to duplicate it right here so we don't modify the original one and here we'll just set the frame start to minus 240 and end to one and now we're gonna bake it so let's go to cache settings right here and bake all dynamics and now if you play it back you can see they're looping nicely but we can make this a little bit better uh, because the rotation is a little bit rigid like this so let's delete all bakes um, and of course, make sure on both particle systems, you have the same seed. Um, I left the default zero, um, but you can, for example, set seed to one and get a little bit different behavior, you know, find what best suits you, but make sure they're both have same seed. And now let's delete the bakes again. And down here where the rotation is, we can set the axis to random. But again, make sure you do it for the both systems now. So let's set it to random and let's bake it all again. And as you can see, the rotation is now a little bit more funky, a little bit more random. Um, it really makes for a nice looping background animation that you can use, you know, for whatever purposes you might want. Um, so now I'll just go ahead and, you know, give this some material and create some basic lighting so we can render this out. So let's expand this view and let's switch this to shader editor and we'll select the leaf from the outliner so we can create a new material there. Let's call this leaf. 
and let's go to render settings and let's switch to cycles i will enable gpu the noising and enable gpu for the denoising as well and i think something like 64 frames for the animation will be just fine and now i'll press ctrl b and limit the preview only to camera bounds hold z and look for the rendered preview and this is too dark because we don't have any lights in the scene so let's press shift a let's add a light area light let's just press g then z move it up and let's make it larger like this and let's give this something really strong like 1500 so now this is what we get here the nice soft light from the top and i really like this can maybe bring it higher up and now let's select the leaf again and let's pick some basic color here and let's make them you know a little bit desaturated uh, because the fall is upon us the summer is over that's why i'm doing this looping animation in the first place so we can make this even more interesting by randomizing the color a little bit so let's press shift a and let's search for object info and now let's press shift a and let's add a ramp and we can use this random node to drive the location on the color ramp and plug it into the color so now you can see they will go from black to white which is nice already if you want to use like a black and white animation this is already good to go but here we can create more color stops switch from linear to constant and basically just pick whatever color we like And finally, we can play with the roughness a little bit, make this more stylized, you know, more glossy. And select the background, create a new material there. Increase the roughness. And now we can, for example, add more lights, so we have more reflections. So we can duplicate this one, press R twice to enable trackball rotation and move the light around to create some interesting reflections make this a little bit smaller and you can see those reflections coming up here and finally in the render settings you can go to color management pick different contrast settings and play with the exposure so yeah, I will now go ahead and play, you know, with the materials and lighting a little bit more so we can have a nice thumbnail. And I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave that like. If you're new around here and want to learn more, hit that subscribe. And I'm curious to see your results. So if you have something, you know, join our Discord. The link is in the description and show your work. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.